What kinds of things do you consider to be psychic abilities? Seeing the future, the past, or the present? Telekinesis, telepathy? Do you think any of these things could be legit abilities? Now as you think about that, consider that the US government spent millions and millions of dollars over several decades researching and experimenting on those very topics in highly classified settings. One of these strange programs went by the name of Project Stargate. Spearheaded in the 1970s by physicists Russell Targ and Dr. Hal Putoff, Stargate was focused on an ability called remote viewing. The idea of remote viewing is that a trained or gifted person could see another location without needing to actually be there. Now, of course, if that worked, then the implications would be huge. So did it work? Well, that depends who you ask. Anecdotally, there are a few instances that we know of where it does seem to be legit. The most famous one comes from former President Jimmy Carter and involved a remote viewer in this program named Rosemary Smith. Smith was allegedly able to locate a downed spy plane in the jungles of Africa after reconnaissance flights and satellites had failed. Other stories involve locating hidden nuclear missiles or submarines, and presumably, much still remains classified. Despite this, the program was cancelled in the 1990s, claiming a lack of consistent and usable results, though the CIA did say that the results were, quote-unquote, statistically significant. And many of the program's former members continue to this day to claim that it was very real, despite being unpredictable. For this episode of Lore and Legends, we're going to look at one of the strangest remote viewing sessions that we know of, that, if true, would also have some pretty massive implications. It took place on May 22nd, 1984. What follows is the transcript of that remote viewing session, which features a monitor, or supervisor if you will, and the remote viewer himself. In this case, the remote viewer's name was Joseph McMoneagle, and the task was to explore a certain area on Mars, one million years in the past. Method of Sight Acquisition A Sealed Envelope Coupled with Geographic Coordinates The sealed envelope was given to the subject immediately prior to the interview. The envelope was not opened until after the interview. In the envelope was a 3x5 card with the following information. The planet Mars. Time of interest, approximately 1 million years BC. Selected geographic coordinates provided by the parties requesting the information were verbally given to the subject during the interview. All right now, using the information in the envelope I've provided, exclusively focusing your attention now, using the information in the envelope, focus on 40.89 degrees north, 9.55 degrees west. I want to say it looks like, I don't know, it sort of looks, I kind of got an oblique view of a, a pyramid, a pyramid form. It's very high. It's kind of sitting in a large depressed area. All right. It's yellowish, uh, okra colored. All right, move in time to the time indicated in the envelope. I've provided you and describe what's happening. I'm tracking severe, severe clouds, more like a dust storm. Uh, it's a geologic problem. Seems to be like, oh, just wait a minute. I've got to iron this out. It's really weird. Just report your raw perceptions at this time. You're still early in the session. I'm looking at a after effect of a major geologic problem. Okay, go back to the time before the geologic problem. Uh, total difference. Uh, before there's no, I don't know, oh hell. It's like mountains of dirt appear and then disappear when you go before. See uh, large flat surfaces, very smooth angles, walls. They're really large though. I mean... They're megalithic. Uh, all right. At this period in time, now before the geologic activity, look around, in and around this area, and see if you can find any activity. I'm seeing... It's like a perception of a shadow of people. Very tall, thin. 
It's only a shadow, as if they were there and then they're not, not there anymore. Go back to a period of time where they were there. Um, it's like I get a lot of static on a line and everything. It's, it's breaking up all the time, very fragmentary pieces. Just report the raw data. Don't try to put things together. Just report the raw data. I just keep seeing very large people. They appear thin and tall, but they're very large. Wearing some kind of strange clothes. All right. Now holding in this time period, holding in this time period, I want you to move from your physical location in space to another physical location. But in this time period, move now to 46.45 north, 353.22 east. Move in this time to 46.45 north, 353.22 east. I'm deep inside a cavern. It's not a cavern, it's more like a canyon. I'm looking up. The sides, sides of a steep wall that seem to go on forever. And there's like uh, a structure with, it's like a wall of the canyon itself has been carved. Again, I'm getting very large structures, no, uh, no intricacies, just huge sections of smooth stone. Do the structures have insides and outsides? Yes, they're very... It's like a rabbit warren. Corners of rooms, they're really huge. I don't... I feel like I'm standing in one. It's just really huge. Perception is that the ceiling is very high, and the walls are very wide. Yes, that would be correct. All right. I'd like to move now to another location nearby. All right. Move on from this point in time to 45.86 north, 354.1 east. Again, 45.86 north, 354.1 east. They have a... appears to be the end of a very large road, and there's a marker thing that's very large. Keep getting a... Washington Monument overlay. It's like a, it's like an obelisk. All right. From this point, then, let us move to another point. Move now to 35.26 north, 213.24 east. Move in this time to 35.26 north, 213.24 east. It's like I'm in the middle of a huge circular basin of the range of mountains by almost all the way around, very ragged, ragged mountains, very tall. The basin's very, very, very large. Scale seems to be off or something. It's just really big. Everything's huge. I understand the problem. Just continue. See just a right angle corner or something, but that's all. I don't see anything else. Okay, then let's move into a little different place very close. Move from the point you are now, in this time, to... 34.6 north, 213.09 east. Move in this time to 34.6 north, 213.09 east. A cluster of squares up and down. Um, It's like you want to make them square, anyway. They're almost flush with the ground, but it's like they're connected. Something very white, or reflects light. What's your position of observation as you look at this thing that reflects light? I am amid an uh, oblique left angle. The sun is, uh, the sun is weird. Look back down at the ground now, and we're going to move just a little bit from this place. Just a little bit from this place. 34.57 north, 212.22 east. Very close by. Now I'll move over now to 34.57 north, 212.22 east. It's like I can just perceive, uh, like a radiating pattern of some kind. It's like some really, uh, strange intersecting kind of roads that are dug into valleys, you know, where a road is just a little below the edge. Tell me about the shapes of these things. They're like real neat channels cut. They're very deep. It's like the road went down. Okay, now I have, uh, I notice electrically you're nulled out a little bit, and I want you to stay deep and recapture your focus here. It's really tough. It, it seems like it's just always very sporadic. I realize that. It's very important that you maintain your focus. 
I have a movement exercise again for you, and this is some considerable distance away. So, holding your focus in time, remember the focus in time that you had before, and moving now to 15 degrees north, 198 degrees east. Take some time and get back deep. See the intersecting, whatever these are, are aqueduct type things, these rounded bottom carved channels like road beds. See, uh, uh, see pointed tops of something on the horizon. Even the horizon looks funny and weird. It's like a, a different, it's misty, like it's really far away, very vague. Okay, another movement now to 80 degrees south, 80 degrees south, 64 degrees east, 64 degrees east. Move now in this time to 80 degrees south, 64 degrees east. I see pyramids. I can't tell if it's an overlay or not because they're, they're different. Okay, do these pyramids have insides and outsides? Uh-huh, got both. They're huge. It's really, uh, it's an interesting perception I'm getting. I think he's losing his ability to move accurately, but he has attracted two things that are interesting, so we're going to go with his own. We're going to let him go ahead and explore what seems to be interesting to him rather than move on to the targets indicated here. It's filtered from storms or something. Say that again? They're like shelters from storms. These structures that you're seeing? Yeah, they're designed for that. All right, go inside one of them and find some activity to tell me about. Uh, there's different chambers, but they're almost stripped of any kind of furnishings or anything. It's like a strictly functional place for sleeping, or that's not a good word, uh, hibernations of some form. I, I, I can't get a real raw input. There's storms, savage storms, and they're sleeping through these storms. Tell me about the ones who sleep through the storms. Uh, they're very tall, again, very large people, but they're thin. They look thin because of their height, and they dress in, uh, oh hell, it's like a real light silk, but it's not a flowing type of clothing. It's like it's cut to fit. Move close to one of them and ask them to tell you about themselves. Uh, they're ancient people. They're, uh... They're dying. It's past their time or age. Tell me about this. They're very philosophic about it. They're looking for a, a way to survive, and they just can't. Can't seem to get their way out. They, they can't seem to find their way out. So they're hanging on while they look or wait for something to return or something coming with the answer. What is it that they're waiting for? There uh, evidently was a, a group or party of them that went to find a new place to live. It's like I'm getting all kinds of overwhelming input of the, the corruption of their environment. It's failing very rapidly, and this group went somewhere, like a long way to find another place to live. What was the cause of the atmospheric disturbance or the environmental disturbance? I uh, see a picture of a uh, picture like, oh hell, it's almost a warp in a, oh god, this is difficult. It's going, let's see, the raw data, please. Oh, I get a globe? Uh, it's like a, a globe that goes through a comet's tail, or it's through a river or something, but it's all very cosmic. It's It's like space pictures. All right, now before you leave this individual... Ask him if there is any way that you... Ask him if he knows who you are, and is there any way you can help him in his present predicament? Uh, all I get is that they might... They must just wait. He doesn't know who I am. Think he perceives me as a hallucination or something. Okay. When the others left, these people are waiting. When the others left, how did they go? I get an impression of, uh, 
I don't know what the hell it is. It, it looks like the inside of a larger boat. Very rounded walls, uh, shiny metal. Go along with them on their journey and find out where it is they go. The impression of a really crazy place with volcanoes and gas pockets and strange plants. Very volatile place. It's, it's very much like going from the frying pan and into the fire. Difference is there seems to be a lot of vegetation where the other place didn't have any. Uh, different kind of storms. All right, it's time to come back now to the sound of my voice, into present time, and right now to the 22nd of May, 1984, the sound of my voice. Move back now to the room, back to the sound of my voice, back further now to the sound of my voice, on the 22nd of May, 1984. End of interview. So what do you make of that story? So here we have the U.S. Army with a remote viewer and some unknown group, for some reason, asking questions about Mars. And not just Mars in general, but they have a specific time they apparently wanted to go look at. And the remote viewer sees pyramids and tall beings living in these pyramids, and the purpose of the pyramids is to escape some kind of terrible storm or cataclysm on Mars, and they're leaving. They're looking for uh, presumably another planet, and the giant boat perhaps is a giant spaceship. And the question is, well, if they were there, where did they go? So presumably, it's another planet with a lot of other crazy activity. So they're leaving one bad situation, but going to another bad situation because they don't really have a choice. Sounds a little bit like uh, Earth, right? Volcanoes, lots of vegetation, you know, million years ago, so maybe a little bit different environment than we're used to today. I don't know, just something to wonder about. So the thing here becomes, do you think any of this is legit, or do you think that this is all garbage? And if you think that this is all garbage, how do you feel about the government spending your tax dollars? And if you think that something like this might be legit, then what are the implications here of uh, aliens next door, even if it was a million years ago. Now, I feel like at this point, I need to also mention that a lot of these guys in the remote viewing world are also some of the same people that are real big in UFO stuff, even present today. Uh, least of all, Dr. Hal Putoff, who is in with uh, To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, he's all over the place. He gives talks. He's been around Skinwalker Ranch. I mean, he's got fingers in all sorts of weird stuff. So I will leave a link to lorenlegends.net in the description for this episode. And on that page, you will find all sorts of that weird stuff where guys like Hal Putoff are. Uh, more on remote viewing, more on some of the UFO stuff. Uh, the link to the CIA page where you can find this transcript. And if you haven't checked out lorenlegends.net yet, uh, you might go for it. There's not a ton of content on there, but I do do this for every episode. And um, some of the bigger episodes that have, like, more history stuff, uh, there's actually going to be a fair bit of, like, side story stuff and pictures to go along with each of the episode and some other stuff you can click on if there's an episode you like. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this one out. Um, June was a busy month. I had a lot of traveling going on and... Uh, you know, I imagine most everybody's work schedule has been a little hectic lately with all this bullcrap going on in the world. Uh, a couple of things to note, though. I no longer do the Facebook page. I got off of Facebook altogether, uh, even me personally. Um, I actually got off of Twitter there for a while, but I did get back onto Twitter because it sucks me in. Um, and that's pretty much it. I don't really do anything else on social media anymore. So if you want to shoot me an email or spam me, uh, you can hit up the comments at laurenlegends.net or shoot me an email at laurenlegendspodcast at gmail.com or look me up on Twitter at Obi Wade. But that's all I had for this episode. See you next time.